All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty. I testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger. In the previous session, we just mentioned one form of torture, which is the ability of seeing hellfire from such a far distance. There are many texts in the Quran and in the Sunnah describing hellfire and the punishment of hellfire. Let's talk about the description of hell itself first. The depth of hellfire. How deep is it? Well, the Prophet ﷺ was sitting one day with the companions, as narrated by Abu Huraira, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim. And suddenly, they heard a bang. The Prophet ﷺ asked them, Do you know what this was? Naturally, they didn't. So they said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this was a stone that was thrown in hellfire 70 years ago. It just reached the bottom of it just now. A fall of 70 continuous years until it reached the bottom of hellfire. The wet of hellfire. Utmah ibn Ghazwan, may Allah be pleased with him, and this is also in the book of Imam Muslim. He said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the distance between Two doors of hellfire is a journey of 40 years. This is a distance between two doors. A distance of a journey of 40 years. And then he said, A time will come and it will be crowded because of the people thrown in it. May Allah protect us from hellfire. Hellfire, as Allah Azza wa Jal informs us, has seven doors or gates. Allah says in Surah Al-Hijr, verses 43 and 44, وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّ and verily, hell is the promised abode for them all. To it are seven gates. For each of these gates is a special class of sinners a sign. Allah Azza wa Jal has a sign for every door or every gate, a category of people, a class of people who will enter it or enter hell from it or through it. It's heat. In the book of Imam Al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hell was blown for 1,000 years until it turned red and then was blown 
for 1,000 years until it turned white. And then it was blown for 1,000 years until it turned black. And now hell is black and dark as a pitch black, very dark night. Ayyadam Billah. We seek refuge in Allah from it and its punishment. Last time, or in the last, rather, last set of verses, the Prophet ﷺ described one of the angels, the size of one of the angels. And I want you to keep that in mind when I tell you about the size of hell. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, Narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said, Hell will be brought on the day of judgment with 70,000 bridles or chains. Each bridle or chain has 70,000 angels all pulling it. 70,000 each one has 70,000 angels. What magnitude are we talking about? Keeping in mind the description of the angels. We mentioned when we spoke about the ascent of the angels when the heavens crack open. Can you imagine the size of that hell? That is awaiting disbelievers, transgressors, sinners. The Prophet ﷺ, given a little extra piece of information or more details about the heat of hell, he said, your fire is nothing but one of 70 levels of temperature there is, of hellfire. Each one of the extra 69 levels is equivalent to the temperature of your fire. People said one, meaning the one we have, would have been sufficient. That would have been enough. But no. Allah Azza wa Jal deals with people in justice and denial and transgression entails that people get punishment. As a consequence of their either their denial or negligence to the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now when we want to start talking about the punishment of hell, let me talk about the least tortured person in hellfire. To reflect the amount of torture or the amount of pain rather people will feel as a result of the punishment and torture in hellfire, the Prophet ﷺ described the least tortured person in hellfire. He said the least tortured man in hell is a person who has underneath his feet two pieces of live charcoal. Due to them, his brain will be boiling. And he will be thinking that he is the most tortured person in hellfire, whilst in fact, he is the least tortured. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, let us not go through, the, through these texts and get its impact on our heart now and forget it 
once we leave the masjid tonight. It is very important that we take hell, that we take the hour, that we take death seriously. Just today, I received a call in the morning at about 9 o'clock. A man called me, a dear friend. He said, Sheikh, I want you to attend the funeral of the son of one of my best friends. I said, certainly. He said, we will pray the funeral prayer immediately after Salat al-Dhuhr. So I went. And to my surprise, I say to my surprise because we're heedless. And I was just saying this to people when we were going to the funeral. I say, we remember death when somebody, when somebody dies. Otherwise, we forget it. We're heedless. I say, to my surprise, the boy was only 18. And how did he die? He was swimming with his father. And he went a distance, a very short distance in the water. And then his father followed. And then he said, it's too hot. He said to his father, I think I'd rather go back. And he pulled the muscle. His father left him and went in. He pulled the muscle and died. Drowned. The man tells me, this old, this old man, my friend, he said, this, this boy was an expert in swimming. But the decree of Allah was that this man is going to die at this age, at this day, at this time of the day. And he did. So let us take these texts seriously. Because we don't know when we will be exposed to death. When is going to be our time to taste death and start that journey, that terrifying journey, the journey of the hereafter. Hell, as huge as we described or as the texts, Describe, it will be filled. A time will come when it will become full. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is narrated by Anas and reported by an Imam al Bukhari. He said, People will be thrown in hell. And it will continue saying more, more. And people will be thrown in it more. And it will continue saying, I need more, more. Until Allah the Almighty puts His foot in it. And it will scream saying, enough, enough. Meaning, I am full. And then it will collapse on each other. Or on itself rather. After that, it will be collapsed and shrink. So, who are going to be the dwellers? And who are going to be rescued? Who are going to be deserving? And who are going to be saved? We have the choice. That man that was buried, that young boy that was buried today has no choice now. One thing came to mind as I was leaving the area, the graveyard, or rather the area where he was buried. I said, subhanallah, if this man 
was asked for a wish, he would say, I just want to come out and say, Astaghfirullah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. So I said that immediately. I said, now I have a chance. He doesn't. So we have a chance. We still have a chance. Why? Because we're still alive. And the choice is ours. The choice is ours. If we want to work on rescuing ourselves from such a fire, from such punishment, or lead ourselves to destruction. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from destruction and punishment. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alam.